Hey there, photographers, Brenda Petrelli here with Outdoor Photography School, where we help you create better images and reconnect with nature. In today's video, I'm going to show you what I pack in order to go out and do a day of winter hiking and winter photography. I recently published an article over on the Outdoor Photography School website where I go into detail about how to stay warm doing winter photography and what you should wear. So I'll go over a bit of that today briefly, but uh, if you want to check out more details about the proper way of layering and whatnot, then be sure to check out that video. So first things first, I will be bringing my camera, obviously. I usually bring a 24 to 70 millimeter lens, as well as a wide angle lens or a telephoto lens, depending on the type of shooting that I'll be doing. I shoot with the Nikon D810. I always bring an L bracket and the one that I'm currently using is from Really Right Stuff. Um, I have a couple of their different universal L brackets and I have found them to work really well. And the cool thing about an L bracket is that it allows you to mount your camera in landscape mode or in portrait mode very quickly without having to move that ball head over 90 degrees and make your, your tripod a little unstable. I also um, always bring along the Peak Design camera leash. I like this because of these little anchor links that you can quite very quickly take your uh, camera strap off and back on again. And so when I'm scoping out compositions, I like to have the strap on as an easier way of carrying my camera. But then once I get the camera on the tripod, I often will remove the strap if it's windy. If it's not, I often will just keep it there. No big deal. I also always bring a tripod. This is the travel tripod that I use. It's become almost my full-time tripod. If I need something super sturdier, sturdier, I'll go with a heavier tripod. This is the Gitzo GT1542T. They may have a more updated version, but this is the tri tripod I use. And I also use a really right stuff ball head. And I will link in the description below all of the equipment that I'm mentioning here today. I always bring along a little sack, very lightweight sack from Eagle Creek. And in it, I bring a little microfiber cloth to clean my lens in case I get some spots on my lens because it'll be snowing. A few of these little lens wipes. These are alcohol wipes that are safe for your camera lens. I always bring along a few multi-tools for working with my tripod and my L bracket. For winter photography, one of the things you need to keep in mind is that your batteries are going to run out much faster than in uh, temperate temperatures. So I always bring along uh, one or two extra batteries that are already charged. And if it's really cold, like uh, below zero degrees Fahrenheit, for instance, then I will carry the batteries in my chest pocket so that it's closer to my body warmth. I also always bring an extra SD card and I put it in one of the little cases to protect it. And uh, additionally, I'll usually put it in a plastic bag to make it a little more waterproof. Sometimes you need a little gaffer tape. And so I've just put a couple of rounds of gaffer tape on this old ID card. Um, just good to have around in case you need it. I like to use a shutter release cable. This way I'm minimizing the amount of vibration that can happen when I'm depressing the shutter. And this is the Velo FreeWave Plus is the camera shutter release that I'm using right now. I like it because the remote is wireless, and so I don't need to be actually attached to my camera through a cable or something in order to trigger the shutter. Typically, I'll bring along an extra carabiner, just never know. Sometimes I want to hook my hat onto the back of my pack or whatever. I also bring this extra absorbent microfiber cloth. If it's snowing, I'll often drape it over my camera like that in order to give it a little extra protection while I'm getting the shot. And it's also a great way of wiping your camera down should it get wet. Usually I bring a couple of little filters in this little filter nest. I don't always use filters in my winter photography. Um, it all depends on the weather and the subject matter. So depending on what uh, I'm doing that day, I may or may not bring out the filters to save some weight. So that is it for camera gear. In terms of safety. Now, um, around here in Vermont, we have a lot of ice. And I find that even in snowy conditions, it's really helpful to me to be hiking with these micro spikes. So they're basically a 
a mild version of crampons. They're not going to be as grippy on ice as crampons are. So if you're doing real mountaineering, then I suggest getting crampons. But if you're doing just, you know, hiking on normal trails that might be a little bit slippery, I have found these micro spikes to save me a lot. Alternatively, I will also usually bring my snowshoes because if no one has broken trail yet on the trail and the snow is deep, it's really good to have snowshoes so that you sort of float more on top of the trail. So usually I bring them along and then if I need them, I bring, I hike with them. And if not, I just leave them in the truck. It's always good to hike, especially if you're hiking alone with a little first aid kit. So I always pack along a, a little lightweight first aid kit. It has some bandages. It has some matches in case you need to build a fire for an emergency. I have some water purifying tablets and uh, a couple of different medicines that you might need like painkillers or whatnot. Because this is a winter hike, I will also pack along a little bit of hand warmers in case I get stuck and cold and I need to warm things up pretty quickly. I always wear gloves and a hat. I always also bring along a just a regular baseball hat because usually when I'm hiking, I sweat. And so I like to switch out my hat. And for talking about clothing, you can see here I'm wearing a, a liner uh, shirt. It's a long sleeve thermal layer. It's very lightweight. It's also wicking. I then have this outer layer that's like a, a little hoodie and it's made of wool and spandex and it's very warm. I also often hike with this down vest. This keeps my core warm, but everything else is breathable. I have on my... Uh, my snow pants, um, they're just shell snow pants made by EMS, nothing special. And then I also wear these snow boots. Uh, these are made by Solomon. I love these snow boots. They are very warm. I tend to freeze. My hands and feet get very cold. And this is the first snow boot that I have found that works well for my feet and my body type. So I highly recommend them, but you really have to find what works for you because everyone's a little bit different. Other things that I'll bring, but not necessarily wear, are more for emergency purposes. So often when you go up a mountain, you know, you're going to be sweating on your way up. And when you get to the top, especially if it's an open top, it's going to be windy, at least to here in Vermont, that tends to be the case. And so you need to be prepared for a rapid change in temperature. Things will get a lot colder at the top of a mountain than at the bottom. You'll be sweaty, so you'll be wet. And so you need to protect yourself from getting hypothermia in those conditions because it's a bad mix to be cold and wet. Even if I'm wearing this on my hike, I might strip the vest in case I'm getting too warm. I try to regulate my layering as I'm going up the mountain so that I don't sweat too much so that my clothing doesn't get too wet. And I always make sure that I'm wearing wicking clothing. And then I also always bring along an extra long sleeve down jacket. Um, it could be down, it could be a synthetic down, either one, just sort of another insulated layer. And then what I do is because down and other types of insulation are really compressible because it's mostly air that's insulating you, I use a compression sack to bring sort of the gear that I don't anticipate using but need to have with me for safety reasons. So I'll take my, my down jacket and I'll just stuff it in here. I also bring some down mittens in case uh, my hands get cold and I need to do some quick warming up with my hands. In case my gloves that I'm wearing get wet, I bring an extra pair of gloves. These are just liner gloves and I can wear them on the inside of the mittens. An extra pair of wool socks in case the socks that I'm wearing get wet. I'll also always bring a second hat. I usually wear this one, but I'll bring a second hat in case again, somehow I get wet, get stuck in ice or snow, storm or whatever. You want to have dry options. The other thing that I'll typically bring along on a winter hike is some sort of rain protection or snow protection, something to keep you uh, dry. Now, if it's going to be very cold, then I'll wear an actual winter shell or like today it's actually not that cold out and so I'm just bringing a very lightweight rain jacket and I can fit that over my down or my insulated layer and then that'll give me a little extra water and wind protection if I need it. And then what you can do is you can compress this down and get all of the air out of it. It has this little top And there you have it. It's just this little thing. In fact, I'm using a compression sack that is a little too big for it. Um, for this material, I can even squish it down even further. But it is a way of taking this safety gear, compressing it down, and being able to have it take up less space in your backpack.
And then last and not least, I always bring along some food. So um, I usually like to eat before I get on the trail so that my stomach has some calories in it. Before I hit the trail, then I don't have to pack as much food, but you always wanna make sure that you're packing calorie dense food when you're hiking, especially in the cold because you're gonna be burning more calories trying to stay warm. So I usually bring along a little peanut butter packet. I like these little package packets because they're easy and lightweight to pack for the trail. You can also pack just some nuts if you prefer to eat uh, straight up nuts. So this has good protein and fat in it. I also usually bring along a little jerky bar. If, it's, if you're a meat eater and you enjoy eating jerky, this is another way of packing a lightweight but calorie dense food that's going to provide you with protein and fat, which will help keep you satisfied for longer than carbs. But of course, you're going to be burning a lot of calories and energy. And so quick carbs are good to have as well. And so usually what I'll do is I'll get some dried fruit. My current favorite is this organic mango. It's just dried fruit and it's very lightweight. And then I always bring at least a liter of water. Again, because in the winter you might not feel your thirst or dehydration as much as you would say in the summer when it's really hot, it's still important to be hydrated in the winter. And a little tip about how to, how to keep your water from freezing in the winter is to pack it upside down because ice will form on the top first. And this way you can still open the lid or you can pack with the water bottle closer to where it would be on your body so that your body heat can help warm it up. One other piece of gear are these hiking poles just to give me a little bit more stability because as many of you know, my knees are terrible. I've had surgeries in both. And so hiking is still uh, quite a challenge for me these days. And I find that walking with poles just gives you a little more stability, especially uh, on the descents. And so this is what my pack looks like fully packed. So I've got my, my poles, my water bottle upside down, my micro spikes if I need them, my tripod, and then everything else I need is on the inside of the pack. One reason why I like this F-Stop pack is that there are lots of different places to put your gear. So I have here, um, very readily accessible, I've got my first aid kit and my hand warmer. So they just left there. In the top here is where I have that cinch sack with all of my emergency backup clothing in case I need it. Up here in this uh, more narrow top pocket is where I have my food, easily accessible. I don't have to, you know, dig it, things out from the inside of the pack. And then of course on these packs, the back here, the back panel is where my camera gear is kept, like so, and the camera gear is inside. One thing that I really like about these F-Stop packs, and one reason why I got this one, is that I really like the back loading capability because when you're putting your pack down in the snow, then the back of the pack doesn't get covered in snow. And so when you put it back on your back, it'll be dry. And so that's one reason why I recommend this pack and I'll put a link in the description below in case you wanna check it out. Okay, so I was just packing my bag and I realized that my lovely D810 is getting an error and I don't know why. Um, and this is my moment to go out and do some photography. And so I'm gonna go anyway. And instead I'm going to be bringing my camera that I usually use for vlogging, which is the Canon uh, Rebel SL2. I think it's also called the 200D. I've actually never done landscape photography with this camera. And so challenge accepted.
so I'm almost to the top and I don't know if you can hear it but the wind is just whipping around like crazy so I have bundled back up again I've got my hat got my mittens got my extra down um, layer on I'm already feeling a little bit chilly because I was sweaty on the way up um, and there's a bit of fog coming in, so I'm not sure we're gonna get a view at the top, but just, you know, a reminder to bring extra clothes on a trail like this because you just never know what kind of weather you're gonna get at the top of the mountain. It could be very different than what's at the bottom. So you wanna make sure that you're prepared. So let's go see what we can find at the top. Okay, so here we are at the moment of truth at the top of our hike or at the summit and we are in fact in a big cloud. We're supposed to get snow this afternoon so I think that's the storm coming in. So if you would like some tips on how to photograph snow and how to expose for it properly, uh, check out the next video which is all about how to use exposure compensation in your snowy scenes. So I'll see you in the next video. Thanks a lot.